Belgium. Let's go to Laura Burden Manley for an in-depth tour of the holy sites. Thanks, Doreen. Now, Jerusalem dates back to almost 3,000 years before Christ and is one of the most important cities in the world for the three monotheistic religions. That's Islam, Christianity and Judaism. Now, inside the square kilometered area of the old city, you'll find one of the most important sanctuaries for all three religions. It's designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO and is the third holiest site in Islam. It's the Al-Aqsa compound. It includes the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the dome building that dates back to the 7th century, and the Dome of the Rock, built in the same period, but the iconic shining golden roof was added in the 1960s. Now, next to this is what's commonly known as the Western Wall. It's the most important holy place for Jews who believe it's the only surviving structure of a sacred temple. For Muslims, it's known as the Barak Wall, a place where they believe the Prophet Muhammad visited during the night of ascension. Now, towards the Christian quarter of the old city, you'll find the Via della Rosa, tracing the path Christians believe Jesus walked on his way to crucifixion. This ends at the entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the holiest site for Christians where they believe Christ was resurrected. But for many, the Holy Land stretches from the Mediterranean Sea to the River Jordan and holds some of the religion's most important sites. But many of these are rarely covered by Israeli tours, especially the areas past the separation wall. So let's take a look at these. Now, if we head southeast over the wall that divides the occupied West Bank to the south in the hills of Hebron, here lies the Ibrahimi Mosque, an important sanctuary for Muslims. Now, just over two decades ago, the Israeli settler Baruch Goldstein entered the mosque and shot and killed 29 worshippers. Now, after that, the Israelis divided the mosque, setting 60% of it for settlers residing there illegally to pray. They know it as the Tomb of the Patriarchs. Now head north down the hills and you'll reach Shepherd's Fields in Bethlehem. Christians say here three shepherds followed a star to the city of Bethlehem and eventually to the Church of Nativity. Now this sits over a cave known as the Grotto where Christians believe Jesus was born more than almost 2,018 years ago. First commissioned in the 4th century, it's also a UN World Heritage Site and was the first to be listed under Palestine. Now, not far from here, built deep into the cliffs, lies one of the oldest inhabited monasteries in the world, that's Mar Sabah. Now, let's continue to head down the hills to the surroundings of the lowest city on Earth, and that's Jericho. Here lies the Mount of temptation, a seemingly gravity-defying monastery set up in the hills of the desert with views of the Jordan Valley and the Dead Sea. Now, this is where Jesus was said to be tempted by the devil. Now, if we travel west about an hour's drive past Jerusalem over the Israeli-Gaza separation wall, we reach one of the oldest churches in the world. That's St. Porphyrius. It dates back more than 1,600 years and serves Gaza's dwindling community of just over 1,000 Orthodox Christians. Now, not far from here lies the Great Mosque, Gaza's oldest and largest mosque. Built in the 7th century, it has been destroyed by conquerors and earthquakes many times, but it's been rebuilt and remains in use today. Now, although the Holy Land is an important for all three religions, Muslims and Christians are often prevented from visiting these sites due to the Israeli occupation of the land.